In this series of videos, we will read the Care Certificate Workbooks, both what you need to know and what do you know now. This video covers Standard 14, Handling Information, what you need to know, and it's over to my colleague to read through this workbook. The Care Certificate, Handling Information, what you need to know. Standard 14, the Care Certificate Workbook. Confidentiality is a very important right of individuals who receive care and support. It is part of the relationship of trust that individuals have with healthcare support workers and adults in social care. Always be shared only. For example, with other workers involved in the individual's care, you should not share information within the person's family or friends without the individual's permission. For example, an individual may not want a friend to know about their health or if they have been unhappy. It is also essential to protect private information from accidental viewing or hearing. Worker and chatted about your work, you should consider whether others would be able to hear or if personal or if a personal letter to an individual was left in a public place where other people could read it. Today, there are lots of ways of keeping in touch with people. For example, Facebook and Twitter, or X, where information is shared instantly. As a health or social care worker, you should be careful to use these responsible and mindful of confidentiality rights of all individuals, including other workers. Many workers have mobile technology with them at work, which means it is possible to share information about their day or individuals without enough thought. And so there are increased risks of breaching confidentiality. This is just as much a breach of leaving a record out of a filing system or remaining logged in into a computer confidentiality through use of social media, including taking or sharing photos or videos, may be a disciplinary offence and in some case may even be a criminal offence depending on what is shared. Overall, you have a responsibility as a health or social care worker to safeguard an individual's personal information. You should also treat the personal information about other workers that you have access to in the same way. You meet legal requirements about you must act within your employer's agreement and through the system in use in your workplace to protect. Agreed ways of working. Agreed ways of working are an organization's policies and procedures. This includes those less formally documented by individual employees and self-employed as well as formal policies. Legislation. Increasingly, personal information is stored in computer databases. The General Data Protection Regulation GDPR 2016 Check for Updates regula regulates the use of this information data to balance the individual's right to confidentiality and an organization's need to use it. The General Data Protection Regulation GDPR 2016 replaces the Data Protection Act 1998 Check for Updates. This covers any information related to a natural person or data subject that can be used to directly or indirectly identify the person from a name, a photo, an email address, bank details, posts on social networking websites, medical information, or it also introduces digital rights for citizens. Legislation. Legislation is laws and the government guidance on the legal rules that affect people in society. There are six privacy principles contained within GDPR. Lawfulness, fairness and transparency, purpose limitations, personal data can only be obtained for specified, explicit and legitimate purposes and can only be used for specific purpose and no other without further consent. Data minimization, no more than the minimum amount of data should be kept for specific processing. Act and where necessary, kept up to date. Storage limitations, Data no longer required should be removed. Integrity and confidentiality. Data must be handled in a secure manner. The Freedom of Information Act 2000. There is a right under the Freedom of Information Act and the Environmental Information Regulations EIR to request information held by public authorities. This came into force in January 2005 and is known as the right to know. It allows you to access recorded information such as emails, meeting minutes, research and reports held by public authorities in England, Northern Ireland and Wales. Under the includes central government and government departments, local authorities, 
hospitals, doctor surgeries, dentists, pharmacists and opticians, state schools, colleges, universities, police forces and prison services. If you work within an organisation where this applies, please note that individuals have the right to view anything written about them. This may include documents, reports and even emails between two co-workers. This means if you add any of these records, you need to remember that you must write accurately and suitable to be reviewed by those whom it concerns. If a public authority believes that their information is covered by the qualification exemption or exemption, it can apply the public, public interest test. This means it has to identify the reason why it is not in the public interest for the in public interest does not mean that the public might find it interesting. It means that there is good reason something is made public. You can find more information on the link with the Freedom of Information request. Handling information in health and social care. Your employee will have agreed ways of working in place to protect information. Those in relation to electronic information will include having computer firewall and password protection. Passwords should only be shared with those who have permission to access the information concerned. If you have a personal password to access information at work, you should not share with anyone else or allow it to be found by anyone. There will be there will also be practices related to paper-based systems, such as where they are kept and the procedure for access. Even when providing care and support in someone's home, it is important to know what records there are and where they are kept. Ask your manager to explain the agreed ways of working about handling information and to answer any questions you may have. Digital working. Digital learning and digital information sharing are becoming everyday practice in health and social care. There is increased understanding of benefits of improved communication and knowledge. It is now an aspiration that everyone delivering care and support will have the confidence to work digitally and the opportunity to develop their digital skills, whether this is with computers, smartphones or assistive technology. Assistive technology. Assistive technology is any technology that can be used to improve the functional independence of the person with a disability. Care plans. Care plans are a key record about the individual's needs and choices and risks. They are an important tool in good communication between those who are involved in providing care and support. Ask your employee to share examples of care plans for you, talking you through how they are completed and what information should be included. They must always be kept up to date, complete, accurate and legible in order to ensure quality and consistency of care. They may become legal documents of evidence if at any point there is cause for concern or inquiry. It is therefore vital you include all details of agreed care as well as avoiding jargon and ensuring that the information is factual and not based on opinion. Someone in your workplace will have the responsibility for checking care plans regularly to ensure they are fit for purpose. 6 C's Care Care is central to work within health and social care sectors and must always take into account the individual's well-being and needs. Reporting concerns. There might be times when you have concerns over recording, storing or sharing of information. These could do with bad practice relating to confidentiality, for example if files containing sensitive information have been left lying out or the key of the office has gone missing, or they could be to do with how to handle information about risks of the well-being of the individual. In either case, your manager will be your first port call. Managers must be told immediately about any concerns over breaches of confidentiality so they can take action. For example, if files have been left lying around for an authorised person to see, the manager must speak to the worker who took them out, remind all staff the agreed ways of working, inform the person to do and take any action possible to limit the damage caused. If a key has gone missing, there needs to be checks to see that nothing has gone has been improperly removed and the locks need to be changed. Health and social care workers have a duty to report unsafe or incompetent practice to their organisation's regulatory body, for example, the CQC. If the manager doesn't take your concerns seriously, it is your responsibility to make the report under the whistleblowing procedure. 
If your concerns are based on the individual's information, you will need to obtain their permission before making a complaint. Whenever you have major concerns about recordings, you should make a written record stating your concerns and who you have reported them to. You should sign and date it as it may be used in evidence at a later stage that you reported your concerns properly. Six C's. Courage. Courage gives us the confidence to do the right thing in difficult or challenging situations. Great work on finishing this What You Need to Know booklet. In this series, we also have the What Do You Need to Know activity booklet that follows on from this video.